we're talking about as corruption because that's a big uh, uh, those are the in fact I'm counting I wanted to say what are the biggest headline but uh, just looking at the dailies it's just corruption corruption page two page three page four page five and is it purely coincidental that we're now looking at NYS Kenya pipeline Kenya power company uh, all these things happening at a go is it purely coincidental or what is happening to Kenya is someone trying to uh, maybe blind us uh, one after the other so that we forget what's happening? Because it appears to be happening in very quick succession. Mm. It's in only a matter of weeks. We're mm. seeing five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten headlines on mm. different issues of graft mm. in government. Mm. I think um, it, it's important to recognize that um, Kenya has gone through some very significant changes. I think if you look, for example, at what has been termed the famous handshake and how it sort of, you know, projected Kenya from that situation where everybody was really in um, deep anxiety as to what was going to happen and whether or not we were going to be able to get uh, business and we were going to relate as Kenyans and we were going to really just manage to get even our own, say, National Assembly, mm -hmm. Senate operating the way that is expected, we seem to have obtained some ray of hope that implied that we were now going to begin to dig and find out what it is that was ailing us. I remember that as we looked at the kind of uh, um, agreement or conversation that was between the two leaders when they were in, at Harambe House, was to indicate that there were a lot of issues that we had thought that the 2010 constitution would help us deal with, but which we were not able to address. And one which they raised was corruption. My view is that um, there is a sense in which that kind of um, occurrence that took place on March 9 seemed to have ignited mm -hmm. not only hope, but um, perhaps uh, allowed some people to then share information that they would otherwise not have talked about. Mm -hmm. And um, the way uh, Senator had indicated earlier when we got changes, for example, with the, the DPP and the DCI, and uh, we, we, we got all this atmosphere where it looks like Kenyans are ready to try and solve issues, that that could be the issue. But we also need to remember that we want to ask ourselves that what is it that prevented some of these people from sharing this information before so i think we need to recognize that it is connected to you know election post election this time way in which people are trying to see how they can position themselves into mm -hmm. this new space that is has been opened up and of course the expectation is that the president will uh, probably try and mirror the psyche of the nation with this awakening in the fight against graft. Do you think the president uh, should probably focus on that? Because uh, this is what we're reading every day. This is what Kenyans are feeding on every day. That uh, the fact that uh, in terms of procurement of government uh, tenders and all these things, there's a lot of graft. Probably this is what the president should decide to focus on now and probably not necessarily the big four. Uh, well, I agree that the president must focus on corruption. He has no choice. He must focus on dealing with this matter. The headlines, uh, as screaming as they are, someone shared with me the headlines from Ghana. And it's interesting that Ghana also, uh, the headlines are screaming corruption. But uh, I want to give credit to the fourth estate. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these exposés are coming from the media. It is not coming. It's not gov government telling on itself. Mm -hmm. It is not government saying that we have discovered these people are corrupt. It is a media that raises it, then parliament also picks it, and then the executive swings into action, and we see people uh, being taken to, to court. There are very few instances in this country where corruption cases have been investigated and uh, prosecuted and judgment entered without an initial expose by the media. Mm -hmm. And to that extent, I believe that the media is doing a great job uh, in, in, in its oversight role. The timing coming after an election, I tell you that if there was a change of government in this country, you would be having 100 corruption cases. There would be more. There would be more mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. the people who have retained power 
obviously they they have an interest in covering up some of the things they did in the last uh, uh, government and so when you get 10 or uh, five cases now probably there could could have been 10 times the number of cases if there was a change of government you saw what happened when uh, Mwai Kibaki took over uh, all of a sudden we realized that this country had so much money mm -hmm. but that money was going into private individuals pockets through corruption if the president does not deal with the issue of corruption now and unfortunately he does not have a lot of time he only has 2018 and a little bit of 2019 because after that the Tangatanga -tanga movement is going to take over the headlines and it will be about 2022 it will be about politics of succession it will be about tribal delegations it will require money and that money will come from somewhere mm -hmm. if the president does not deal with corruption now the big four will be a mirage and the big four if you look at the pillar on food security, yesterday we were with the CSQ injury in Senate talking about issues going on at NCPB. We are paying money to fixtures, uh, traders and fixtures individuals. Mm -hmm. How do you guarantee food security when NCPB that is established to, est uh, to, to protect our strategic grain reserves is a milking cow for the corrupt? When it comes to the plank on housing, affordable housing, NYS was supposed to produce the army of, ma of, of masons and plumbers mm -hmm. and electricians that were going to build the 500,000 affordable houses. N NYS has become a milking cow. When it comes to manufacturing, where you need uh, energy, where you need uh, uh, fuel, we are hearing scandals coming out of KPC, scandals coming out of KPLC. So there's no way we are going to achieve the big four if we do not tame corruption now. And there are those who also think that with the big four, now that people, the, 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 the hyenas and uh, the, the cartels know that these are going to be the president's pet projects, corruption is going to follow the big four. He must tame it now, otherwise he will have no legacy to leave to Kenya. And, and now that we're on that point, it's also curious that mm. uh, uh, Raila Odinga, who has been at the forefront of fighting graft, mm. uh, at least in uh, bringing all these things out, has been very quiet mm. on all these issues. I've not seen, uh, there's no headline uh, where uh, uh, the right honorable Raila Odinga is talking about all these things. Mm. Uh, we're talking about the president. Yes, after that mm. handshake, it seems like a duo thing. Mm. But... Uh, don't you think that even he has a role to play in this? Mm. Uh, why do you think has been so quiet? Mm. I think there's a, a sense in which we have to ask ourselves, um, what would he be saying that is not already said? Remember when I talked about this, I took you right back to the steps on March 9th. And I think that there is a way in which as you look at that, you would see that uh, the, the effort to change the country and particular to try and deal overhaul the kind of governance so that you have good governance was before if you look at uh, what uh, uh, the right honorable prime minister Raila Odinga was talking about uh, premised on institutional reform on getting to deal with the kinds of leadership that will be accountable on getting to ensure that um, we would find ways by which Kenyans would not feel in some way deprived or excluded and so when you look at the manner in which the discussion took place the key agenda was to see that now we would put behind elections and all these issues that we were dealing with and, 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 and seeking to confront in, in, in a way that was to some extent required when you're going to an election to begin now to get a, ses a system in which you start working on this good governance framework. And I believe that putting corruption as a key agenda and coming through in what would seem to be a united statemently approach between him and the president mm -hmm. to move Kenya forward could be the reason why we are also getting all this mm -hmm. coming out right now. Okay. So I think what Kenyans need to be asking themselves, the fact that he is not talking mm -hmm. does not mean that he is not part of what is happening right now. Okay. I think in my view, if you look at the very premise on which as they shared, the two of them, putting Kenya before everything else and saying that among the key issues that were needed that needed urgent action was corruption was a sense in which kenyans were feeling excluded was really just beginning to bring back national ethos mm -hmm. was getting us to get to a culture which we would be proud of then i would say that he's not silent at all mm -hmm. i would as a matter of fact ask kenyans to ask themselves are we really when we look at what is happening right now not in fact seeing a sense in which this joint action to get back kenya for now within the next one year is indeed uh, 
result or his contribution. I'm referring to a, a tweet by lawyer Nelson Harvey, uh, who said that if you ever thought that uh, there's a day a day would come when Raila Odinga will be, and he was addressing Kenyans, would stop fighting corruption for you, that day has come. Do you agree with him? I don't agree with him. Mm -hmm. uh, Raila's uh, stance at the moment is strategic. And I don't think it is by omission, it is by commission. It is well thought out. Mm -hmm. The problem with corruption in the past has been politicization of the fight against corruption and ethnicization of the fight against corruption. That when Raila Odinga is the one exposing corruption, like he did in NYS season one, mm -hmm. uh, we must give him credit for all the corruption exposés in the past government. It was Raila Odinga who would uh, amplify it and uh, then in partnership with the, the media in its oversight role, uh, give it life and, and it would capture the imagination of Kenyans. But whenever Raila Odinga talked about corruption, then the other side of the political divide would uh, take a political dimension mm -hmm. and it would be them against us, irrespective of the merit of the issues. NYS season one was dirty. It was played out in the, the full glare of the public. We had Kabura swearing an affidavit and mentioning people in high places, mentioning people in the National Assembly, mentioning people in the Senate. You had even parliamentary committees mm -hmm. carrying out investigations and inquiries and coming up with conclusions, and those conclusions being watered down on the basis of political differences. We must depoliticize the fight against we must de-ethnicize the fight against corruption. When one of the suspects in NYS1, who is today um, is a governor, came before parliament, you found members of parliament coming from certain ethnic uh, groupings that were close to uh, the suspects, coming out in, in support and in mm -hmm. defense. In fact, they acted in a very unparliamentary manner, almost heckling, almost uh, causing uh, a disturbance in, in a committee of parliament. And so, when Raila Odinga takes a statesman stance mm -hmm. and uh, leaves these matters to be dealt with at a different level, it helps because we have depoliticized, we have de-ethnicized, and we are now looking at corruption for what it is. Theft uh, of taxpayers' money, and it is not taxpayers from Jubilee or, 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 or NASA, it is all of us. It and is Kamau is that, and Is that Kodong. the feeling right now? Do you think that's the feeling right now across Kenya that uh, we've uh, de ethnicized, depoliticized the fight against corruption? We're no longer talking about Jubilee or NASA, we're just looking at... I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a fewer statements coming from the political class. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm hearing more encouraging statements coming from mm -hmm. the political class. Uh, mm -hmm. People like my friend and Indi Nyoro, ETC, who sometimes can take very radical and mm -hmm. very uh, closed uh, uh, political positions depending on uh, or, or who's talking. At, at least I hear them talking about things that would make sense, not just to the people it represents in central Kenya, but mm. to, even to the people Kenya in Nyanza. So I'm seeing we are taking a good direction with this matter, that we are putting away our, our political lenses, we are putting away our tribal lenses, and looking at uh, corruption for what it is. The 47, we don't care. And, mm -hmm. and I do hope that the 47 suspects were not picked one from each county mm -hmm. so that it is balanced. I don't care which tribe they come from. I don't care which county they come from. Okay. I don't care which political party they uh, subscribe to. All I care is that mm -hmm. if they are proven guilty, they would mm -hmm. have stolen the taxes that I pay, that millions of Kenyans pay.